main folder. So let's go do that. So we need to create a few more files. So I'm going to do control N for a new file and control S to save. And I'm going to do algebra one.html. Do another control N. Uh, save. Let's do algebra two.html. And let's do another one and save it as sat.html. Okay. So now if I go back here and I refresh the page, now if I click, I don't get that warning. I just don't have anything on this page yet, but I can go to the Algebra 1 page, I can go to the Algebra 2 page, and I can go to my SAT page, okay? Cool, so that's, that's pretty cool, we're getting there. Um, so I want to have a few more section IDs so I can style this out, uh, or a few more sections with posts so I can style that out. So I'm going to copy this and paste it a couple more times. And let's say, because we can only have one of these. So let's say this is systems of equations. And we'll just make the title uh, or the H3 tag systems of equations. And then let's say this is complex numbers. Okay, and we'll go here and make this complex numbers. Okay. So we're going to save this, and now if we go back to our home page and refresh, we've got some posts here now. So we, we've got something we can start working with. Um, in your document, you also probably want a footer. Okay, so let's create a footer, and we'll close out the footer. And you probably want to put something like your copyright. Now, I may want to center this paragraph. So I could give it a class. Let's give it a class, and we'll call it center. Okay. And then I'm going to say copyright, and I'm going to do the copy, right symbol. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't actually copyright it. It just writes copyright at the bottom. Um, you would have to go through the process to do that. But I can do the copyright symbol. I can say 2022, the year. Uh, it's going to be 2023, probably when you're watching this. So Timothy Unkert, all rights reserved. Now let's close out the paragraph tag there. And let's save it. Now, when I refresh, you notice that it's left aligned. It's not centered yet. So we have to do that in our CSS. That's coming later in our styling. All right, so we've got some of this. Um, we may want to put a list of things we might learn in the quadratic formula or something like that. So we could do that as well. We could go here and create, let's create an order list. So that's an OL tag. And then let's create some list items. So list item one, let's close that out. Let's duplicate this a few times and then close out our OL tag. And notice how I'm doing this indentation here. I have my editor set at four spaces, which is the default at the time of this recording for Sublime Text. Some people do with HTML two spaces. I don't tend to you know, go in too many groups. I don't want to make it too complex of a structure. I just want to get the content out there. So I like uh, the four indents. It's nice and easy to see. Uh, I'm going to just change the numbers here. So we'll do two, three, and four. All right, and we'll save that. And here, if we refresh, we've got a numbered list, okay? Um, we can also create something like, let's say we want in the systems of equations, we want to have an unordered list. So we'll do a UL tag, close it out, and we'll do a list item here with list item one, and we'll make uh, multiple lists there. And I can do control shift K to delete that line there. And I'll do two, three, four. Now I'm going to give this one a class of, let's call it a letter list, something like that. So we're going to do uh, letters in the list. Okay. Now, if I save this, you'll see that we got like the navigation, we get the default behavior is bulleted here, but we're going to change that with CSS. Okay, one other thing that you might want to have on a website after the main 
is an aside where you kind of have a sidebar. So we can do that with the aside tag. So we'll do a side and we'll, I don't know why it gave me a paragraph. And then we'll close out the aside tag and then we might have a couple sections. So we might have a section with an ID of about the author. Okay, and close that out. And maybe we have an H3 tag that actually says about the author. Okay, and we'll close that out. And then we might do some dummy text here to talk about the author, okay, for styling. And then you might have another section with an ID of featured posts. I'm using the sublime shortcut where I'm just going to hit tab and it's going to give me the open and closing section. And then I could do something like uh, featured posts. And what I could do here is an unordered list. I can type UL and hit tab with a bunch of list items. And the list items go to posts. Now, if I just want to have this and keep the, the behavior on the same page, You'll see a lot of times that developers, when they're developing before they put the links in, will do a hashtag, right? That's to an empty ID on the page. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just say, let's say post one, and then we can just duplicate this line a few times and post two, post three, post four, and post five. And we can save it, okay? So now if we take a look at this, we scroll down, we've got the featured posts here. Move this out of the way. Oh, so let me move this out of the way. And we've got our um, we've got our copyright down there at the bottom of the page. Okay. So hopefully I can move this out of the way. All right, so now we really want to start styling it. So to start styling it, we're gonna to need to have a style sheet. Okay, and one thing this uh, sidebar is getting a little narrow, so I can double click and widen it. One thing that I would want to do is create a new folder. And a lot of times you'll see something like assets, and then within the assets folder, I might create another folder. We'll call that CSS. And then within the CSS folder, we might create a new file and we might save it as something like main.css or styles.css. And this is where I'm going to put my styles. Uh, and in the assets folder, you might also have a JS folder for JavaScript, where you include some JavaScript to add some dynamic elements to the page. We probably will do that later. OK, so first off, I kind of want to start styling this page. And one thing that I might want to do is change the font. So let's go up here and open a browser. And we'll type in Google Fonts. Okay. And the first thing that comes up is about Google Fonts. So let's click on that. And here we see that there's a description making the web more beautiful, fast, and open through great typography and iconograph iconography. I don't know if I said that correctly. Um, anyway, so if you go down here, all fonts and icons in this catalog are open source and available to anyone making beautiful typography and iconography accessible to anyone for any project. Okay, cool. All right, so let's click on this to get to the home page. And you'll see some suggested fonts that are very popular. Um, so we see Roboto is very popular. Open Sans is very popular. Lotto, Poppins. Uh, source Sans Pro. Let's do this one. Okay. So I'm going to type Source Sans Pro and I'm going to go here and I'm going to decide what uh, font weights and styles I want. So I want a regular 400. That's the, the default for regular text. I'm going to dismiss this. We see that we've got the regular 400 here. I think I also want the regular 400 italic. And then for headings, I want the bold 700 and the bold 700 italic. Now, you don't want to go too crazy with this. The more fonts you add, the heavier amount of code that needs to be loaded when people go to your web page. So if you're 
uh, interested in, in terms of performance, and you should be, then uh, don't include too many fonts. A lot of web developers are, in my, my opinion, uh, put too much frameworks and all this stuff on there and just slow down the web tremendously. So don't be that guy. 